Hello, hello, Caligra friends. Aaron here. How are you today? I'm doing pretty good myself. I am starting lesson number two for my intro to copper plate calligraphy. So uh, if you were here last week, you know that I had started um, or I had decided to start doing some kind of um, more formal teaching lessons on Twitch for calligraphy, um, kind of as a way to give back to the community a little bit and a little bit of, um, like, I like teaching, it's fun. And uh, this is a good way to, for me to not lose my, my teaching skills uh, as well. And... Um, yeah, no, I just kind of find it fun. Um, you know, I kind of want to make it a little bit more accessible to people. And uh, yeah, anyways, I, I figured uh, Twitch, what better place to go? Because, you know, no paywall. You kind of just come in. You don't even have to log in to watch. Uh, so yeah. Anyways, uh, I'll get I'll get started. Um, okay. I have a little bit of an outline, a bit of a curriculum for today, uh, but the first thing I wanted to do was recap a little bit from last week, and um, I wanted to also explain a little bit in more detail the guidelines. I'm trying to, what should I do first? Actually, I'll start with the stretches first. So this was... <laughs> Dorm you watching me in football? I mean, just the bow. Split screen that, you know? Uh, plus, I'll be uh, clipping out things later on as well. Uh, I also, also, Twitch keeps things for 14 days. So, I had said last week 30. If for whatever reason, I had 30 stuck in my brain. But 14 days, and then, uh, you know, I'll go through and I'll highlight clips. And I'll make a playlist and stuff. So, you know, don't worry. But split screen <laughs> also works nicely. Um, but lovely to see you. Lovely to see you here. How do I pronounce Sumire? Sumir? Sue? Maybe just Sue. <laughs> um, or maybe just Faith. Uh, yeah, so um, I'll start with stretching. I mentioned it last week, and, and I want to make sure that uh, new people who come in know that this is something that is actually important because calligraphy is, oddly enough, like a pretty... Just Faith is fine. Uh, oddly enough, calligraphy is a lot more like body intensive than you would think. Um, there's a lot of tension that ends up in people's shoulders and their arms and their form. And for me, it's always my form. It's always get where I get the most tension. Uh, so I always try and, and start before I do anything uh, to doing a little bit of, bit of stretching. And I haven't done any calligraphy today at all. I was working on a different project uh, for a, a, a company who hired me on to do some work for them, but uh, most of it's actually not calligraphy, so I was mostly just on my computer, staring at my computer screen in uh, Google Sheets most of my morning and on the phone. So I definitely need to stretch, because especially because I was just like on the computer and like typing away like a, you know, like this. So, you know, so I'm just gonna do a little bit of stretching in my shoulders, so I'm really pulling back like here. I tried to wear a light color again so you can kind of see even though my mic is in the way. Uh, but, you know, I'm, I'm trying to not like be melting into my chair. But I'm trying to like, I'm trying to be upright and stretching my arm, like putting a little bit of pressure. I'm not hurting myself. I'm not stretching uncomfortably. I'm just doing a nice little stretch here. And the other side. Oh, my last name is Nielsen, but thank you for asking. My first name is Aaron. Uh, I kind of just went with Nielsen letters because I felt like it rolled off the tongue a little easier. <laughs> but my first name is Aaron. All right, and then I'm gonna do, don't get freaked out, as an Aaron. Yeah, Aaron Nielsen. Mm -hmm. And then I'll do my forearms. Don't get freaked out because my I know my fingers are, are oddly uh, stretchy. Uh, I've been cracking my knuckles since I was a kid. So I, I have a feeling this is probably why. But I can pull back pretty far. So maybe don't do that far for yourself. But I can I can move my, my wrist and my fingers back pretty far. And the 
other side. And then I'll do a little bit of my neck. And then just, all right. Oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you. My parents had good taste <laughs> when they named me. Yeah, so if you ever hear like a like a that in the stream, it's just me cracking my fingers. Um, I've asked my doctor if this is bad, and she's like, it doesn't matter. I'm like, great. <laughs> I'm not going to get arthritis because of this. She's like, no. Thank you, doctor. Appreciate it. So lots of stretching. Yeah, it's something that I never took seriously doing stretching and stuff beforehand until I started doing calligraphy full time. And then I think the first the first week I was full time, uh, both you know knock on wood, good and bad at the same time, uh, I got really busy really quickly and I didn't take the time to take care of my body and I regret it like crazy. Um, Cause like I th for. The first week or two, I was just go, 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 no stretching, no really taking care of the stuff. The third week, I was like, oh my God, I like, I'm dying. <laughs> I had so much pain, in, <clears throat> excuse me, so much pain in my neck and my forearm, my shoulders. It was rough. So now I'd always try and make sure that I do it. Cause like you always, you'll, you'll end up doing this and like, cr like rolling your shoulders in while you're writing or doing any kind of art, I find. Um, yeah. So there's that. Then I wanted to also go into um, kind of what makes an ideal work environment for when doing calligraphy because I kind of touched on it last week, um, but I didn't really go into crazy detail about it. And this is something that um, I find when I'm teaching uh, private students that I mention to them, but sometimes they don't take me seriously and they should. Um, is when you're about to start to practice, <clears throat> make sure that you don't have a timeline of like, I have 20 minutes to practice, let me go as fast as I can. Cause that's not gonna be fun for you. It's not gonna be good. Um, Cause especially if you're trying to do some kind of uh, real like improvement and trying to work on something, 20 minutes isn't enough time. And you just focus on trying to get it over with versus like, figuring out and focusing on what you're actually doing. Um, and what happens to you is when you're rushing, tension happens in your hands. Mm. But the, tension happens in your hands and what ends up happening is your lines won't be as nice. You're going to be really tense. Um, you're not going to get a lot of the nuance and what's happening as well with what your pen is doing. And it's going to make your life harder in the long run. Um, so having enough time is a good, a good step. Um, number one, uh, actually, I made a little list. Hold on, let me pull my list. I have it. I have it. I have it here. I came very well prepared. Um, a well lit room, as well. We're not trying to go blind. Uh, yeah, I work well under pressure for when I have a project to do. But like, if I'm trying to practice and learn something, like doing trying to learn anything 20 minutes is like not not good <laughs> i always recommend at least 45 um so there's that uh, a clean and flat surface so while i'm streaming my desk is a bit more cluttered than it normally would be just because i have my laptop and i have like my ipad here and i have a mic and i have a whole blah, blah, blah thing but if i was just like actually doing work or practice my desk is mostly clean like i don't really keep too much on it um I have a separate area over here <laughs> where all of my crap lifts and drawers and stuff. Uh, but while working, I try and keep my desk clear because like when doing calligraphy, you're you're trying to not cramp yourself too close. You're trying to do bigger movements with your hands and big bigger movements with your with your with your arm in total. Um, so if you're trying to work in a really constrained space, kind of like I'm doing now for just for the purposes of Twitch, it becomes difficult difficult. <laughs> you tend not to work well in a well-lit room. Oh my goodness. If I was working in like a really squinty, like partially dark, because I can't, I can't see guide, I can't see my guidelines. So these guidelines here, I wrote on top of my paper, uh, just to make it more clear for, for Twitch. Usually I just slide it underneath and if it's not well lit, I can't see it. <laughs> I'm blind. <laughs> um, like good, po good posture. That's so funny. That's so funny that I'm telling you all the things you're like, these are all the things that I do. And I'm like, no, no. <laughs> Specifically for calligraphy. Like, you know, that's that's kind of the, the general rule of thumb. 
Oh, light pad, yeah. I do, I have a light pad as well. Um, but in that case for me, then that becomes well lit. But um, I, because I already wear glasses and I are, well, I don't have bad eyesight, but I, you know, I have, I need to wear glasses. I don't, but mine's mostly for far. So I don't want to have to start getting glasses because I can't see near. <laughs> so I try and at least make the room have some good ambient lighting. And then I have a light pad because if the light pad's too bright, I'm like, oh my God, I'm gonna go blind here. Um, let's see, uh, limited distractions. So that's why I just have like a really chill audio right now playing. It's nothing too crazy. I'm not listening to System of a Down. I'm not listening to Disturbed, <laughs> although sometimes I do, but for like calm, uh, practice. I try and keep it chill. Uh, if, if at all, sometimes I just work in silence. Um, I find it just a lot easier to focus on what I'm doing if I'm not distracted by outside things. Uh, sometimes I just listen to TV shows, honestly, though, while I work, but it really depends on what I'm feeling. And then I want to, uh, kind of iterate the importance of warm-up drills, especially now, because I haven't done any calligraphy at all today. Uh, so I'm, gonna be a little bit more like rough than I was last week because last week I had I had done calligraphy in the morning so uh, it was it was okay but I have my my warm-up drills that I have made for myself and I just slide them underneath here used to hate drills until I realized that they could be useful for other things other than just like pressure and release. Uh, how long have I been doing calligraphy? I've been doing calligraphy since uh, mid uh, winter 2015 into 2016 is when I started to learn like officially with like a teacher. Uh, and then I've taken a bunch of other lessons since with varying teachers and all that kind of stuff, and I went full-time for myself and started my own business uh, mid-2019. But uh, for drills, I like doing them after I got this book from Shin Long. Consistent with practicing? Yeah. Yeah, I had. Uh, I, so I used to work in my previous life. I was a manager in a store, and the store that I worked at was... Uh, really very uh, like the particular one I worked at was pretty high, high like very busy I was very stressed all the time yeah my previous pre calligraphy life <laughs> uh, before I started working for myself uh, I used to run papyrus if you've heard of the brand or the store so there was a store in, in Montreal that I used to run and it was always so busy clients were so there was so much to do and I'd be coming I would come home super stressed and I'm an extrovert anyways uh, so I would be coming home super stressed my brain would be like on fire running around and na -na 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 -na. and uh, calligraphy was my way to calm down and like chill before going to sleep <laughs> so I I practiced a lot once I once I got the hang of it um, I don't know how many hours I've done calligraphy, but I feel like it's a lot, uh, just straight up in practice. I have some of my, not all of them, but I have some of my old practice sheets and they are terrible, but I liked doing it anyways. And honestly, that's like more, most of the, the point, right? Is having a good time while you're doing it. But, um, yeah, so yeah, I did practice a lot. Um, and I kind of view every time I I'm doing any kind of work as practice. Um, I'm always trying to improve. But uh, yeah, anyway, so warm up drills. The reason why I kind of like them more now, because I always was like, oh, this is so long. I don't want to do it, um, was when I got this. Because I realized when you're doing things like calligraphic drawing, most of these are just warm up drills that get shoved into a shape. So I was a big fan. I was like, oh, Shin, you're so smart. Look at this. This is so cool. I won't go through the whole thing just because, like, uh, obviously, she, like, this is a book that she's created and like I don't want to accidentally like break some copyright but like this is just on the back of the book but like this these are figure eights uh and then those are figure eights and then like there's some just some like nice patterns this is kind of like a cartouche but it's also swoopy swirls all that go all the way around like but this is this is this is what consistent like um 
like flourishing and uh, not flourishing like warm-ups are this, it's literally what warm-ups are and you shove them into a shape i was like great love it but yeah it's called calligraphic drawing it's by shin long or at open ink stand on instagram she is a delight she's super fun i met her in 2019 uh, in person at the international calligraphy conference that was in montreal she's so funny <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I actually just did a, a post. Um, oh, it's it's really, it's a fun book. It's, you can you can feel Shin and like her personality in it. It's really good. Um, but I actually had just done a post on Instagram this this week of like, a, like this is when I started. This was in 2019 and this is now. And like, even from 2019 till now, I've improved quite a bit. I'm sure when I look back in two years from now, I'm gonna be like, what is this garbage I was putting online? This is terrible. <laughs> uh, let's see. What does she say? She kind of goes over the basic tools and materials. I think you have to understand how to use a pointed pen. Um, but I did go through it and it didn't seem too bad. She does go through like some exercises and then like she really explains like how to fill the shapes. Um, but I know that she does a fair bit of online workshops now. Um, but yeah, I would say as long as you have a handle and a pointed pen, you should be able to at least mimic what's going on. And then as you, as you practice, you'll know more, but I really like it. So yeah, I'm going to start with doing some warm ups with my pen and ink, and we're going to see how shake pants my lines are. It's going to be rough. So these ones I was going to do were just clockwise. I had cleaned my nib off. There we go. That's better. So I don't know how you do calligraphy, but I, I'm trying to do more of the whole arm movement and I try not to work too much with my wrist and my fingers just because I always get a lot of tension in my forearm. Uh, I'm also using a Nico G uh, nib. Oh, ask away. I am more than willing to answer any questions you have. And if I don't know the answer, I will probably know who can answer that for you or I can point you to some good resources. Because um, I'm also the board secretary of the Calligraphy Guild in Montreal. So, I mean, I have lots of... Uh, people that I can ask if I have uh, random questions. Yeah, the whole arm movement is, uh, I, I've never taken a class with him, uh, but I've heard about it from a lot of different teachers that I've taken. Yeah, Paul Antonio, I have his book actually. This guy. The yin and yang approach, copper plate script. It's a totally different uh, way to think about calligraphy, or copper plate anyways, than I've seen before. So I thought it was really interesting. But uh, the whole arm movement I've heard of from a lot of teachers that I've had. Um, when I first started learning uh, the teacher had didn't talk about it, but that was, I think, literally because everyone that was learning was, we were all beginners, and when you start talking about that, it's, it gets sometimes a bit technical. Um, depending on your X height, like the size between your baseline and your waistline, uh, I find for me, if I work too small, I can't do whole arm movement. Generally speaking, clients will hire me and like they'll want like a three millimeter X height, which is pretty small. And so I can't, so a lot of it is in my fingers or in my wrist, which is like, again, why I get a lot of like tension in my forearm. Um, but if you're working at like six, seven, eight, ten 10 millimeter X height, like whole arm movement all the way, baby. Cause otherwise you, you can't be as consistent. Um, there's a good example actually. So you can see in the camera that's right below where you see my face. You see my my nib 
Um, if you're only working with your fingers, like let's say like I'm, I'm here, okay? And if you're only working with your fingers and you're trying to stretch up, well, you're changing the angle and you're not, if you're not moving your wrist and you're not moving your hand, you're only working here, you're changing the angle of your, of your nib to your paper. So you're like, if you're reaching up to do like an ascender loop, you're going to be pushing it up and your, your nib is going to end up catching on the paper. Um, and same thing when you're pulling down, you're, you're, you're not having a consistent angle. So you're going to be like rolling your nib up which is gonna make your downstrokes not as even all the way down. Does that make sense? Like it's, someone had explained this to me and I was like, oh yeah, of course, this makes total sense. But if you're using the whole arm movement, you're not changing that nib to paper angle. So you're gonna be more consistent with your lettering. I hope that that just blew your mind. <laughs> I think with the O, triple H's, and double, double exclamation point, I feel like I, I hit on something you've not thought of before. Yeah. So again, sometimes it's not possible when you're when you're doing like very small X heights. Like I said, sometimes I'll work at three millimeters and like you, you really can't, in my opinion, do it very well. I'm sure someone who is a master penman would be like, girl, yeah, you can. I was like, all right, cool. <laughs> So just as a thing too for warm-ups, what I'm doing right now is when I'm moving away from me, I'm going light, I'm barely touching the page, and when I'm going pulling towards myself, I'm pressing. But I'm not moving my wrist. Hello! I'm not moving my wrist and I'm not moving my fingers, I'm really moving my whole arm. But again, it's also easier because everything is a bit bigger. Yeah, three millimeter, three millimeter. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can't really use very textured paper when you're doing it that small. Hey Goyo, how's it going? My practice sheets and my warm ups are always so not good. <laughs> All right, so now infinity loop. So this is this is the thing where it becomes challenging for me because I'm working in a more constrained space because of my desk, because I'm streaming. Normally I would push the paper away, but I'm gonna try and move myself back a bit so I'm not like crunched into my body. Uh, also, I don't know if you noticed as well, the paper is gonna be at an angle because I'm trying to get that 55 degree copper plate angle like coming towards my body. And I'm, so I'm always trying to make those the thick line that downstroke, I'm always trying to make it at 55 degrees. That's kind of how I'm using that warm up. So the only thing I'm really doing with my finger as well while I'm working is while I'm doing the downstroke is I'm like pressing. I'm not manipulating it, I'm just pressing my pen down. But because if I didn't, I would have no pressure the whole time I'm working. So now I'm gonna do now I'm gonna do it completely sideways because I'm where my because so my camera's an iPad and it's on like a solid thing so I can't move my like I said I can't move my paper forward so normally I would just have it in like a, an angle but it's a bit harder so I'm gonna try and scooch back <laughs> and I'm gonna try and do it that way so the cone I like because this is we're going bigger And then we're gonna go smaller. I also don't like this song, so I'm just gonna skip that guy. There we go. So when you're doing from smaller to bigger to smaller, again, this is a lot of uh, pen control. 
It makes really fun patterns. So when I first started, I did not use the, the whole arm movement. Uh, I've only started really trying to integrate it more into my practice now as I've been doing more work. Um, I think overall it's probably better for like your health just for uh, tension um, because you're not putting as much tension in your in your hands and in your wrist and you're using like a stronger muscle to work your your whole arm um, but I mean again I did it for a long time without um, so you know maybe try if you don't like it, you don't have to keep continue doing it. The calligraphy police are not going to start knocking at your door, <laughs> going like, hey, 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 hey. Uh, I hear you're not doing whole arm movement. Therefore, you should never hold a pen holder ever again. Do you know what I mean? Like, no one's going to do that. So, I mean, do what you feel comfortable with. All right, so now I'll take that one away. And I'll do... The other one I like doing is my pizza, the pizza, the pizza slices. I find these are fun. So it's essentially like the cone. Welcome to stick around and watch me teach. So pizza shapes are fun because you can kind of just do any of the warm ups. Uh, there are a lot of people who are into calligraphy. Actually, sorry. Because of the people that I follow on Instagram, it feels like so many people do calligraphy. But yeah, I guess you're right. On, on Twitch itself, I don't find that there's that many. So I'm happy to bring it uh, to you guys. That's good. It's fun. But I feel like uh, particularly during this whole quarantine pandemic mess that we're all in right now, I feel like a lot more people are taking up calligraphy as a fun hobby at home. And right now I'm just doing warm up drills. This is just to kind of warm my hand up. pressure and release of the nib so it's just kind of fast and because I haven't uh, done clear read today so I'm using this also as my own warm-up before I start to get into letter group one I also find the pizza is kind of a fun shape to do too because then afterwards you get some fun patterns out of it I should be a pro calligraphy before showing the world how to go about calligraphy. Uh, I have mixed feelings on that. So there are only so many master penmen in the world. Um, and not all of them have the time or the inclination to teach everyone else, right? Um, but there is also no... Sorry, I shouldn't say no. 
If you go through IAMPIF, which is the, oh god, I don't remember how it's pronounced, it's the International Association of Master Penmans and Engrossers, uh, I don't remember the last bit of it. So you can get certified to be proficient in certain hands. Um, I've never bothered to do it because for me personally, it doesn't impede me getting work with, um, like to get actual paid work from clients. So that's one of the reasons why I don't, uh, I don't have, I'm not certified. Um, I also think that if you can get paid for work, you're kind of a professional by definition. Um, so that's number two. Uh, I've also taken, me personally, I've taken a lot of classes with a lot of different teachers and I think that now I'm more comfortable being able to pass information along to other people. I'm also not shy to say I'm not perfect. When you're watching me stream, I'll probably make some mistakes or, uh, but I'll, I'll be able to analyze and point it out. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the thing. Um, yeah, I also don't necessarily like gatekeeping. Um, and I might not be a pro or like not everyone might be a pro who wants to show people how to do things, but they want to share their knowledge. Do you know what I mean? And like, I have no, no issues with that. I think even too, like sometimes the, the pros of the world in calligraphy, I think everyone's always trying to improve um, as well. And I think that that's okay. Because if we were going to wait for everyone to be perfect at everything, we would, before they taught, it would be a long, a long way away. All right. So now that I've done some warming up, which is good. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about, about guidelines um, before fully, fully, fully diving into letter group number one. So uh, guidelines are super important for copper plate or for any type of calligraphy really. Um, copper plate in particular because that's the one I'm the most familiar with so I'm gonna just gonna kind of keep it in, in copper plate uh, myself is the beauty for me of copy plate is the ability to make consistent marks on the page, the thins and the thicks, uh, keeping a consistent baseline, and um, really just the, the beauty and like it looks like a really easy um, like flow if you, if you want to say that. The way that you do that is by using guidelines, which seems so strange because you're like, but this is like you're constricting yourself. These are so many rules, et cetera, et cetera. But I find that you can do a lot within the rules. And once you understand those things, you can have at her and break the rules and do whatever you want, like after, after you understand them. So the biggest challenge that I see with beginners um, is that they won't use guidelines, myself included. When I first started to learn before I actually started taking classes, uh, I didn't understand why I needed to use guidelines. Um, and I mentioned this last week, but I'll reiterate too, like it makes no sense to not use guidelines when I can't write on a straight line with no line in front of me with my regular handwriting. Like, why would I imagine myself when I was, you know, in my early, or my late 20s when I was starting to learn? Like, why would I think that I could pick up a tool I've never picked up before and write straight perfectly on the first shot? <laughs> um, and I would get so frustrated with myself that I wasn't able to write straight and it was like my fault. And I was like, no, I just wasn't using what I should have been using, which were guidelines. You know what I mean? Um, oh, you felt like they slowed you down. I, I find that they slowed me down, but once I got used to them and cause you kind of have to train your hand, um, in my opinion, uh, cause the motion and the movement of pointed pen is like, especially copper plate. Cause it's like, you have to do 55 degrees and it has to be, you know, that, uh, the uh, the proportions have to be you know like three two three uh, for your ascender and your x height and then your descenders. Um, so if you're 
if you're just trying to offhand do it, it's not going to look right. Um, and you're going to end up having a lot of legibility issues, which is sometimes what I find when I see a lot of beginners just picking up something and doing modern calligraphy. And I do, I am will, I'm not shitting on modern calligraphy at all, uh, to be clear. <laughs> I just, I know that sometimes when people dive into like modern calligraphy, they'll, you'll just kind of make a lot of like swooshes and, and uh, a lot of shapes and you're like, oh, I can totally read this. But when you're looking at it from a legibility standpoint, if you don't understand the rules that you're breaking, sometimes things get are hard to read. Um, like certain letters will turn into other letters. Like if you're doing like the letter, let me just use a pencil. If you're doing like a letter A, for example, or an O, actually, I should say, if you're doing an O, generally speaking, this is an O and your connecting uh, ligature is going to be here. But sometimes in modern calligraphy, you'll want to do this and you'll want to do a loop, which is great. But so sometimes you'll do this and then, you know, you'll do this and you're like, oh, that's an O, but that also can look like an A. So if you're not understanding necessarily like, you know, baseline and all that kind of thing, and then you're not understanding how the letter itself is built, legibility becomes issue, an issue or can become an issue. Um, and then if you're doing, uh, you know, you're bouncing the baseline all over the place. So like, let's say the baseline should be here, but you're doing like up here and then you're writing and like the word apple, you know, like it becomes really hard to read because your baseline's all over the place. So, you know, uh, there is something to be said with doing a bouncing baseline, like, like there's something to be said about doing something that's fun and funky in that kind of way. But my, my suggestion is always to start with the baseline that's straight, start with doing your, uh, your three to three X height, uh, your, your proportions. And then once you understand that things, break the rules, have at her, but always start with this. Um, Cause I mean, sometimes, you know, your, your ascender loops are supposed to be pretty, you know, contained, right? Cause you're supposed to find your ovals and your ovals in here and all that kind of stuff. But I mean, if you look at any of my work on Instagram, most of my A sanders are blown out. Like I'm usually like, we, I'm way over here and I'm pulling it up and like, you know, I'm, I'm doing this kind of thing. Um, but um, I understand what I'm doing and I know where I'm putting the weight on is like, I'm gonna start putting the weight here. So the, your eye is being attracted to this area. We're not putting weight on the entire thing. Cause then it looks like, what is this? Is this, is this an O? What is this? Is it a C? Like you're not, you, you run into legibility issues sometimes. Not always, but sometimes that's always my fear. Uh, do I do much bouncy calligraphy? So uh, when I first started thinking about it seriously as a full-time job, uh, I started giving like offerings with like different script styles. So like uh, on my website, I have a few. One of them is a bouncier one. I'm actually in the process of uh, giving different script options right now and, and uploading them onto my website. I just have to make some better uh, better copies uh, for clients to see. But uh, I I like it for certain things. I'm not a humongous personal fan of. Um, the bouncy baseline for myself all the time. It has a place. Um, it's not where I go to automatically, but sometimes clients want it. And I'm like, all right, that's cool. It's your project, not mine. I'll do it. <laughs> no, no worries. Uh, I'm a big fan of like very, very thin hairlines and then like a really nice, like um, not maybe super juicy downstroke, but I like a nice thin hairline. I find it looks really like classy and really pretty. Um, but yeah. That's kind of where I'm living right now. All right. So, um, so yeah, so my, right now I'll do a little quick reminder what your eight basic strokes are. So the eight basic strokes in copper plate are what all of the letters are, are based, like all of the letters in, uh, like from A to Z are based on those eight basic strokes. If you put them together, you can make whatever letter you want. So 
Uh, I'll go through. So we are gonna have our, ta-da, can we see, can we see, can we see? Cool. So we have our entry stroke, which is just, Little, little cameras in the way. There we go. So we're having our thin entry stroke. We are having our down stroke. So we're having one from our ascender line pulling towards myself. This is a little bit curving. Anyways, uh, here, here, there we go. That's better. By the way, this is, this is 50 five degrees uh, also my X side here this is uh, six millimeters this is nine millimeters and this is nine millimeters then we're gonna have a downstroke that is within your X height which is between your uh, waistline and your baseline so then we're gonna do the under turn So the under turn starts at your ascender right here. We're gonna pull down straight and I like to think of it like a clock. I start to turn, if this here is 12 noon and if this is 6 p.m., I start to turn here at around seven, I'd say, ish. So I'm pulling down and I'm lightening up right as I'm about to turn. And then by the time I hit six, I'm no pressure anymore and I'm just at a light hair hairline. Um, also, there's no real consensus. Um, Sarah Script, if you know who she is, she was in um, last week's uh, stream. Uh, we are discussing a little bit as I was going through of like, there's no real consensus. Uh, as from what I've read, uh, or teachers that I've taken of what angle the exit stroke should be, uh, it, like hard lined. So whereas this is 55, this isn't exactly 55. It feels like it's more like a 50-ish degree, give or take, or on my clock analogy, about one o'clock-ish. So just something to keep in mind when you're practicing. Then we're going to do another under turn, but this one is going to be between the X heights. Uh, sorry, in the X height. Apologies. So this is where downstroke, under turn. Now we're going to go into the descender loop. So the descender loop is you're going to pull down towards yourself. I start to lighten up as I'm about to turn and then bring it back up towards itself right underneath the baseline. Sorry if you hear noise, by the way. It's the um, the street cleaners are going by. They're picking up all the snow because we had a big dump of snow a few days ago. So if you hear some, like right now, you can probably hear for sure, like a truck passing. They are cleaning my sidewalk. <laughs> Center, descender loop. Uh, then there's going to be your overturn. Which is essentially the opposite of the underturn, is the overturn. So here, we're starting at the baseline, we're coming up to the waistline, and then as we start to turn, I'm gonna to start to press at around one o'clock, and I'm gonna pull it down until it hits that baseline. Then I'm gonna do the ascender loop. Oh, that one wasn't good, there we go. Let me try that one one more time, up. So I'm starting here at the waistline, up, looping back down, bringing it back down to the baseline. We're gonna do a compound curve. Do that one more time. There we go. Up, my comp 
compound curves are not great today. I find they're the most fun, but they're also difficult to make even. Because this and this should be about the same width. The downstroke here, there should be a bit of a swell. And then we're going back up again. And then we're going to do our oval. So like I mentioned last week, there are two ways that you can do an oval. I got taught one way, but not everyone uh, is taught that way. So the way I was taught was you start over here, you bring it up and around, and then you press, and then you bring it back up to itself. Because you don't necessarily care about that connection line right here, because usually that gets covered by your little filled in loop, or if it's an A, something like that. That wasn't great because it should have gone down to the baseline, but you get my point. Uh, but there is the other way to do the O, or the oval rather, which is starting on the top. I'm not great at this way, because it's just not how I was taught, it's not how I practice it. Uh, but just so you know, where you start at the top, and you bring it down, and then you press, and then you bring it back up, and you meet it at the very top. So, like I said, I do this way, a lot of people do this way, do whatever you want. Uh, what's my favorite nib? This is a very hard question, because it changes. Uh, it depends on the job, depends on what it's for, depends on the paper, depends on how flourished it needs to be, <laughs> like there's a lot of depending. Um, I am using a Nico G right now for the purposes of teaching, because most of the time, most people will start with either a Nico or a Zebra G. Uh, the reasoning for this is, it is stiffer than uh, other nibs, so which means you can put a lot of pressure on it. You can put a lot of pressure on it with and it still bounces back like we're still getting a nice bounce back and i'm i'm pressing pretty hard um which is great for beginners but again the, the reason why i'm using it for this purposes for now is because most people have they can get their hands on a nico or a zebra g uh the hairlines are good for this one especially for like um like a a nib that you can abuse pretty well <laughs> Um, it's good on really smooth paper. Actually, it's good on like sometimes textured paper as well. Uh, it just depends on like how much texture. Uh, but I can't, I find if I'm doing a long, a big job, I can't use an EcoG for too long because I have to press so hard to make the tines open that my hand starts to hurt. Um, so it depends. If it's for like a short quote or something like that, I'm, I won't worry about it too much. But I, if it's something that's long, I tend to not go for the EcoG. Uh, it also depends on the script that I'm doing. If I'm doing Spencerian, Nikos are perfect because there's almost no shading in Spencerian. Uh, so you can use an Eco G no problem. Uh, then, or, or a Zebra G rather. Uh, I find Nico G's and Zebra G's are very similar. There is a very slight difference I find in the width of the hairline. The Zebra G, I find the tip of it is a bit rounder, so the hairline tends to be a little bit thicker, but I'm maybe being a bit picky. Uh, usually what I recommend for them if you're going, if you want to give your hand a bit of a break, because uh, like I said, like if I'm doing a lot of work, Nico G's I find like my hand gets sore, uh, is I'll try to, I'll go to the EF principle. Uh, it's like a, me probably a medium, uh, like flexibility I'd say. Uh, I prefer it to the Hunt 101. Um... I find I have to troubleshoot it less, but maybe that's just me. Uh, I find the thicks, you can make them really thick, and the thins can be really thin, so I think that that's really fun, and it doesn't hurt my hand too much, uh, which is great when I'm using it. And I like the... I used to hate the Browse Rose. I now love the Browse Rose. When I first started... The Browse Rose was way too soft for me. I could not use it properly. I used to have a crazy, 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 crazy hard, hard, um, like, um, stroke. I, 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 I don't even know how I would write because it was so hard. Um, I, I've seen some of my older stuff and I'm just like, oh my God, like, how do I, how do I, did I not break my fingers? Like trying to make that line, Jesus. Um, so there was that. So when you're going from that hard of a hand, 
to a Browse Rose, which is like incredibly, incredibly flexible, it drove me crazy. I couldn't get it to work properly. Um, yeah, I tend to practice with many nibs. Yeah, exactly. But the Browse Rose is great for hyper textured paper. I have some really lovely, lovely, lovely textured paper because I live really close to a, a handmade paper mill. So, um, <laughs> Bob's nibs <laughs> up here. <laughs> Uh, so it has such a lovely give that I can do, excuse me, hairlines. Hold on, I'll show you. So I did this, I don't know, a few weeks ago. This paper has actual pieces of wood in it, right? talk about textured paper uh but this was made with a breast rose so that's fun and then i made this for the gram uh not as textured because there's not actual wood in this but um like the paper's really textured and this is also done with the breast rose yeah i do pointed penential um i learned from uh so in my guild, uh, well, obviously we can't now, but we, we get international calligraphy teachers to come and teach. So uh, Barbara, right when I was starting to like really dive into calligraphy, Barbara Close came to visit Montreal and she did a class and she did pointed pen variations and one of them happened to be pointed pen uh, which was great. So I got to learn from her directly, which is amazing because I think she's doing an online class right now where she's doing Unchul, which is super fun. Um, so her, and then I also, at the calligraphy conference in 2019, um, I took, uh, two, two and a half day classes with Rick. Oh yeah. Yeah. If so guilds are fun, they sound much fancier than they actually are. They're like, they're great. Uh, it's really fun to say like, Oh, I'm part of a calligraphy guild. Like I'm playing D and D. Um, but, uh, most cities have them. So depending on where you are in the world, uh, you can like look it up. There's a website called Calligraphile, uh, C-A-L-L-I-G-R-A-F-I-L-E.com. And they'll have, it's a museums and guilds list and it's pretty good um, for, I think all, most of the cities that have a guild, I think are on that list and it's worldwide. So I would check and see what's in your what's in your area and go and look um but yeah so we had barbara close and then uh, like i said from the international calligraphy conference that was head, held in montreal uh, i took with rick paulus who was uh, the former white house uh, chief white house calligrapher um for like 10 years or something along those lines and he also did a variation on pointed pen uh pointed pen uncle so i got both of them and i've kind of shoved both of their styles together and now i do kind of my own thing because it doesn't really look like either's <laughs> so that's okay but yeah i do i do a bunch of styles um if you're curious hold on I was just making this the other day. I was trying to. So, copper plate, upright, more rounded copper plate, pretty much. It's a bit more fun and youthful. This is kind of my compromise of not having a bouncy script. It's kind of doing something like this, which can still be fun. Uh, Spencerian. This is a pointed pen. It's like a pointed pen version of italics, kind of. And then, Unchul. So it's all there. There's like, obviously you can do a gajillion variations about a bunch of stuff. So, you know, it's all, it's all there. But yeah, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to show this on my website in a way that is, uh, easy to understand for clients, like what different scripts are available to them. So hence why I just have a sheet. I was trying to work on it, uh, the other day for myself. I also do italics, like actual italics, but not very well. All right, so now that that tangent's done. Oh, uh, I don't know. I started with pointed pen and I'm just like, 
And I was like, I like it. I'm sticking with that. So I've only started doing, uh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, foundational. I totally, I know what it is. I have no idea how to do it. Zero clue. Um, only after uh, the, the International Calligraphy Conference in 2019, um, the director of the conference was like, oh, because I was part of the organizing committee. So the director was just like, Aaron, I cannot believe you don't know any broad edge snips, no, any broad edge calligraphy styles. And I was like, I know. And he's like, you need to learn. And I was like, yes, sir. Okay, I got it. So when I got home, like he was giving a class on italics. So I ended up taking an italics class with him. And then I did a correspondence course with Christopher Hannes, if you've ever heard of him. Uh, also italics. And then I was just like, okay, this is not so bad. It's super different from pointed pen. Um, but it's a good thing to know, at least, because it's helpful for when you're learning other styles, because a lot of the way that people teach is very similar, depending, like, similar for different scripts so once you understand um and the way that i think about it the the more scripts you at least have taken classes on or understand how the forms are made the easier it's going to be for you to to kind of branch out and do and break rules because you understand the rules you're breaking that's kind of the thing all right let's start with our letter letter group one so we're gonna start oh yeah you prefer pointed pen too yeah it's my first love playing with folded pens is fun though too to be fair folded pens are really fun they just kind of ink goes everywhere it's very gestural it's good stuff i don't know if i would do things for clients with them but for myself great <laughs> all right so we're gonna start with the letter i so uh so I say this is the overturn uh, ascender loop. This is the the compound curve, and this is the oval. Uh, so I'm going to start with the letter I. So the I is very easy. So the I is the entry stroke plus your under turn. Equals So some people like to flick, some people like to dot. For me, depends on how I'm feeling that particular day. Um, especially because this is kind of more of a uh, teaching beginner, so you understand and then you can move on if you'd like to. Uh, I've had the question of where to place the dot before. I don't like to go too high because then it feels like really at a place, but I also don't like going super low. I kind of, it's like a third up in between your ascender and your waistline. That's kind of where the dot goes, but you can also do it as a, a flick if you'd like as well, or a dot. Uh, I don't like a dot that's literally just a dot. I prefer, if I'm gonna be picky with myself and analyze my own work, if I'm gonna do something, I like it to have a little bit of weight and I try and make it the same-ish width as my downstroke. That's kind of what I'm looking for. So then we're going to go into the T, which is, this is actually let me write here, letter, letter group one. So we're going to the T, so we're going to do, this is another entry stroke plus your underturn, but the underturn starts at about halfway between, about halfway between your waistline and your ascender height. So we're gonna press down and do our underturn. We're just gonna start to turn and then we're gonna bring it up again. And then I don't cross at the line, I cross a little bit above the line. 
right here. Then I'm going to square my top off. Equals 13. A lot of times when I cross my teeth, I'll cross it like this. It gives it a bit more movement. But this is the more traditional way to do it, is to just cross it like a little hat. So then we're gonna go to the J, which is an entry stroke, plus a D center loop. Then I'm going to cross right underneath that baseline and I'm going to bring it back up again so that the entry stroke and the exit stroke of the J are at the same angle. And then I'm going to either dot my J or I will do the flick. If you have any questions in the meantime, by the way, or want me to go slower, I also can do that, by the way. I'm here for you. Then we're gonna do our A, which is oh. sorry, I was just making sure that camera was good an entry stroke plus an oval plus an underturn. So entry stroke, oval, underturn. So when the entry stroke is going to a rounded letter, let's say. This was something I actually learned semi-recently and or only realized that I was doing it semi-recently when I was, there is a Facebook group called Copper Plate Script for All, which I am a fan of, I like it. There's a lot of fun stuff in there that's all free. Love free content. Uh, and the, the work is like really high quality. And there was a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like a free little demo video that someone had done live where they were teaching copper plate. And she said something and I was like, oh my God, I never really thought of it like that, but it's so totally true. And that is, is that here? When you're doing an entry stroke and you're going up, what you're trying to do is you're trying to get it so it meets whatever letter you're going at, and you're not stabbing it. You're kind of lightly gonna be touching it. So when you're going for a, a, a letter that's like a T, you're trying to go right up to that waistline because that's where your T is gonna to touch it, right here, and you're not stabbing it. But when you're going to a letter that's a rounded letter, like an A or a D or a G, you're, you're going at that same angle, but you're not going all the way up because it's rounded. So because if you went all the way up and you do your A, you're gonna get like a weird, can I go more in? No, I can't. There's a little gappy space right here because you're going all the way up, but it's rounded here. So why would you do that? You kind of have to think about it and go here and then you're pulling down and then you're also not doing this, which is like you're stabbing it, right? You're, you're trying not to puncture the balloon. You're trying to go up and like gently rest it next to your letter. Oh, there we go. Now I can get it in more. Perfect. It's a little bit easier to see. So yeah, this is what we're not looking for. We're looking for something that's a bit more, we're going up. We're stopping, we're bringing it down, and then going back up again. And then I, I square off my top. This 
so our next letter is a D. So we're gonna go up, but we're not gonna go all the way up, we're just gonna go right here because we're gonna come back around. We're gonna lean up against that entry stroke. And then down and lean up again. So this was an entry stroke plus an oval plus uh, an underturn. The underturn for the D isn't all the way at the top of the A center line. And it's obviously not gonna be here. Oh, it's okay. The, like I said before, the Twitch will keep my stuff up for the next 14 days. And I'm gonna go tomorrow and I'll, I'm gonna end up like clipping things out. So you can go and rewatch whatever you want at your own pace. But actually, well, I will repeat what I was doing because it's important, but I was gonna talk about it anyways, so it's all good. Um, so yeah, for the underturn for the D, we're not going all the way up to the A center height. We're not gonna be here because that would look like an A. We're gonna go about right in the middle and we're gonna do our underturn right here. So we go back over here, just like that. So together, we're not gonna stab the D. And we're not going to go all the way up for our entry stroke because like I said for the A oops, that was not a good one not a good example here we go you'll end up getting a space right here so you kind of have to think about the next letter that you're doing when you're doing words and you have to go up and then kind of stop bring it over and it's gonna be leaning not stabbing leaning and then bring this down and then I'm gonna square my top. And try that again a little bit faster. Sometimes I find when I go too slow, I make like way more mistakes. in with our entry stroke plus the oval plus a descender loop. So this is your key. So again, we're not going all the way to the top because this is a rounded letter. So take that and go to the G. Nope, up there, up, down, up, descender loop crossing just under the waistline, and then back up again. I'm glad you think this is well. <laughs> this is good. So I'm just gonna open up my blinds, because I, the sun is going down a little bit, and I'm using a little bit of my light. Ah, there we go. You can see me now. <laughs> All right, so then the letter N. We're gonna do, it's an overturn. Plus a compound curve. Oh no, am I doing it right? Yes, I am. Yes, sorry, my brain just like fritzed out for a second. So overturn plus Compound curve. This is a bit shaky pants. I'll do that again. Up. Nope. Up. Down. So what I'm aiming for, and I didn't achieve, but what I'm aiming for is equal distance between here, here, and here. This is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for my oval here, I'm looking for my oval here, and I'm looking for my oval here. Uh, so I also know not everyone does it this way, but um, I don't always go in and touch my overturn here. And the reason why I don't always do it 
uh, and I'll usually leave a little gap is usually because uh, the ink is still wet and I don't want to drag that ink up into my line. So I usually leave like a little line, a little, a little space and then I'll go back and then I'll go back up again. So it's hard to see on the camera, but there is, it's not exactly touching because like I said, it's sometimes if you touch it, the ink is still wet. Um, it will pull back up through and you'll lose your hairline here. And then this line here, this line here, and this line here should be parallel. And then your downstrokes should also be parallel. And the downstrokes should be at 55, at 55 degrees. gonna do my, uh, my nib is being a bit problematic hold on let me see if what's wrong with it I think I'm gonna switch my nib I think this one's I've gotten a bit old because I can see my tines aren't together anymore so one moment. Feel free to listen to the lovely music. be the perfect time to go through and reprep this nib because I don't know if I've used this one or not. I don't remember. So a lot of people use different different things to clean their nibs off. I use just use Windex. I don't use a potato. I don't use my spit. I just When I put it back into the holder, by the way, so I went over this last week as well, but I'll, I'll do it now quickly. When I am lining my nib to the pen holder, I am trying to, if there was an invisible line that was right here, I would be trying to make sure that invisible line was lined up with the end of my time. That's kind of what I'm aiming for, because every pen holder is different. Do certain rules apply to modern calligraphy? For example, the even space between different stroke types. Uh, modern calligraphy is a whole different ball game. Most of it is based on copper plate. Uh, and a lot of modern calligraphy, uh, from what I can see and what I can tell, uh, they're just breaking certain rules in the copper plate, to be honest, and just kind of doing their own thing with it. So everyone's style is gonna be a little bit different when they say modern calligraphy. Uh, some people will, like, overdo the letter P and like really like loop it back. Other people will, won't do that. Um, it's very subjective. Sorry, I'm just gonna fix my camera. I think what's happening is that it's not auto adjusting for the crazy lighting that's happening right now in my apartment. There we go, now you can see me. Hello, I'm back. Um, but yeah, the thing is, because modern calligraphy, a lot of things can be called modern calligraphy. And I, I haven't seen, to my knowledge, I mean, I also haven't seen all the calligraphy in all the world. That would be crazy. And I would have had to study it for a bit longer than I've been alive. Um, but yeah, like from what I can tell and what I can see, everyone is a bit different with how they do and how they interpret um, modern calligraphy. Um, I find the ones who are very good at it, at modern calligraphy, are usually ones who are coming from a more structured background because they won't lose legibility. Because that's always my thing, like I just want to be able to read the words and if it looks great, amazing. Because um, there was, there's sometimes like, 
Mm -hmm. uh, certain things where like you can kind of read like a P instead of an S. Uh, I've been a victim to that myself too, or an R looks like an S. Um, so yeah, it's just kind of one of those things that like if you if you get taught by someone, they'll for sure have their rules that they'll they'll adhere to. Um, and then, but everyone is a bit different. That's like a very non-response and non-answer. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Oh yes, M, M, ma 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 ma. So an M and an N are very similar. An M just has two overturns instead of one. So we're gonna go one. So I did this, so if I'm going to analyze my own work, which I do all the time automatically anyways, because I'm a stupid perfectionist, um, this one and this curve and this curve should be the same. This one is not, because it ended up looking more Spencerian than I was looking for. Oh good, I'm, oh yeah, okay, good. I'm, I, was, I, I, I wish I would be able to give you like a, yeah, there's this exact rule, but yeah, fair enough. Good, I'm glad I was able to answer your question the best I could. Um, so it should... One, and then two, and then here, and then down, and then up again. So I'm still the str still struggle busting a bit over here. Let's try that again. It's a little bit better. But yeah, then now this is a bit too tight. M's are hard. I won't lie. They totally are. Writing the word minimum is a very po a popular one to do because it's like, if you want to see mistakes, you, see, you want to check uh, legibility plus uh, consistency and spacing, minimum is a great word to do. All right, let me try that one more time and see if I can, let's see if I can make her better. There we go, that's a bit better. So you can kind of see here a bit more the way that I leave a little bit of space. This one is a bit more, like again, this and this should be, I should have been doing it at the same height, but I didn't. Um, but the spacing here is a bit better between here and here. Here is a bit still too wide and this is a bit still too narrow, but you know, for the purposes of showing you how to make the letter M, I have done so. Honestly, I think my ink has been left without a cap for a bit longer than I, Realized. So I think it's because my ink has, my ink has definitely dried up a bit, or it's gotten a bit gloopy. I'll be right back. I'm just gonna add some water to my to my ink. All right, I'm back. 
So I just added a little bit of water. I'm gonna stir my ink. No, I don't use a potato. <laughs> I don't know if, if your reaction to that was because you do use a potato or you didn't know that people used potatoes to uh, prep their nib. two letters are U and then Y. So a U is an entry stroke, an underturn, and then another underturn. So there's your letter U. You always use potatoes? Oh my goodness. I'm just like, I don't need to waste a potato. I'll just use Windex. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> So entry stroke plus underturn plus underturn. And then, oh, I, I literally just use, I have a little, I have a little tiny jar of Windex and I just dip it with paper towel. And then and I and then I I'll check and make sure that it's worked. Like when I dip the dip into the ink, and I think actually this one didn't actually get fully uncoated. I just realized. Yeah, there we go. So it should look like that, pretty well coated with ink. But yeah, I just use Windex. It's easier. I don't have, I don't waste potatoes. <laughs> Or, I mean, it doesn't need to be the brand Windex either. It can just be any kind of, like, window cleaner, I guess. That's, like, not too, um, like, I guess too acidic, I suppose. I know some of the old school calligraphers that I know that just, like, use their spit and they suck off whatever oil is on the nib. And I'm like, <laughs> I don't want to, I don't know what's, I don't know what's on, I don't know what chemicals are on there. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah, so... That one, the U. Yeah, I hate wasting food too. I was just like, I would like to have mashed potatoes. <laughs> I don't want to have mashed potatoes with the side of whatever chemical is in that nib, you know? Um, so a Y is your compound curve plus an underturn. So this Y that I'm showing you here, or I'm, uh, yeah, sorry, uh, a decenter loop. Sorry, I said underturn, I'm a decenter loop. Um, I have integrated now, and so it's hard for me to do, actually do this type of Y, which is this way, and then up, and then up, and then here, and then down. It's hard for me to do this one because uh, if you know who Rachel Yallop is, um, she has a very distinct copper plate style, which is super fun to, to look at, to study. Um, she's a super nice person. I took a class with her here in Montreal and it was a delight. She's a wonderful, wonderful lady. Um, and the way that she does her Y's and her G's make me very happy and I like doing it. So I've kind of just done it. I just do it now and I've been doing it for years. Um, even though technically it's not like a true quote unquote copper, copper plate. So her, she doesn't like the squared off tops. She finds it too harsh, so she never squares them. She always has them at like a, a, a nice point. Um, if you look up her work on Instagram, you can totally see. I don't want to go too crazy because I have, I, have I have her book here. I'll show just like something that I know that she's posted. This one I'm pretty sure she's posted on her Instagram somewhere. So like, you won't find a squared off top or bottom in her calligraphy. So 
you know, if you're looking for someone to, to emulate, Rachel Yallop is great if you don't like the squared off tops. Um, cause this is her version of, yeah, I'm, I'm good at doing the bottom one. I'm not to go with the top one. I always just go in and fill it. Um, personally speaking, but she always just has them purposefully starting with, um, with a point. So I essentially copy her G's and her Y's because I like them better <laughs> and I just integrate them into my work. I just, they're more fun because it really does use that like line of universal beauty if you've heard that term before. So let me zoom back in again. But yeah, Rachel Yelp is a really great resource. Uh, if you want to go and see someone who, who took copper plate and just did something super different with it, like she's a really, really, really interesting uh, like person just to look at her work and study. So we're doing a compound curve, going back up again, and then I'll go up and then I'll bring it down and I'll do essentially the line of universal beauty and then I'll come back over. I find this is more pretty, it's more soft especially at the end of a word like it's much easier for me to just kind of to do that uh, with a Y and the same thing with a G that, that G was not super nice there we go yallop y-a-l-l-o-p That Y makes me, it's just, it's its much easier for my, for my pen to do versus like, I honestly, I have trouble doing the traditional one now. It's, it's a challenge for me and it's harder to do. I'm also at the edge of my page. That doesn't also does not help because my finger is getting stuck on the corner of my, uh, of my pad. Oh yeah, my pleasure, my pleasure. I'm always will I, like I'm always trying to shoot people over to people I've I've taken classes with because I I love all of my previous teachers. They're so fun. Anyone I've taken a workshop with, I'm like yes, amazing. Take do whatever classes with them that, uh, that you can. So yeah, this is essentially this is letter group one. I'll do them on the bottom all in a row. Try to do them all in one shot and not. Uh, self-critique too harshly that's actually something that's really fun if you've not taken classes with teachers um, like in person or like a workshop or if you've only ever seen uh, like them their finished work taking an in-person or at least an online class with someone and watching how they work is super super interesting um, because you really see how many mistakes they make um, which is also why I don't care if I make mistakes live on Twitch because it also gives people permission to like it doesn't need to be perfect right away like the amount of drafts that I do before I put anything anywhere or I give a client a final piece is so many like it's so much it's so much work it's so much um, like when I was doing the class with Rick Paulus uh, who you would think would be like perfect every single time he puts a, a pen to paper. No, like he makes mistakes and he'll do it like right in the middle of the class. He's like, well, that didn't, that didn't look good. Let's do that over again. And it makes it okay. Um, and I think that that's sometimes why Instagram specifically is sometimes really hard to do the, like, I think people compare too much with each other on Instagram because what you're seeing is something that's like highly curated. You've like someone has done 50 times that same word and you don't see that. You just see that final product, but you don't see the four hours of work that they put into doing the word March or the word fun. And even you're like, oh, it's super simple, but it's simple and perfect because they've done it a million times. So like doing things live, not really being rushed, I find is a, like very fun. Um, because on Instagram Live too, Instagram Live is also is is fun, but you have an hour, you're capped at an hour. You can't do more than that. You can only have one angle. So it's really hard to show what you're doing. Um, and like, it's still not as accurate because you only see like, a like you see here. And like, that's pretty much it. That's why I like Twitch for this type of thing. Um, but yeah, it's, 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 
I much prefer if you if you ever have the chance to take a lesson or classes with someone who who you like and who you enjoy, I highly recommend like paying attention to the fact that not that they're not perfect even though that's what they do for a living. Cuz like again, I Rick Paulus, i.e. former chief White House choreographer, everything must be perfect. No. He doesn't care. Yeah, I, not being able to afford courses is actually one of the reasons why I I really was like I wanted to do live more quote formal lessons on Twitch. Um, I I know that calligraphy is something a lot of people find joy in. I, I know that it's some at least for me uh, it's something that's like very calming. It's very meditative. It's very like it's just fun to do. But. I also know that it can be cost prohibitive. Um, so something that I was talking about last last week was you don't need a fancy pen holder. I just had this one. This was a gift from my husband for Christmas last year, and it's lovely and it's beautiful. Do I need this to do my work? No, I just like using it. The one that I use a lot is this guy. This is, I think, $12. This is like super good. It's just a normal, normal plastic. The brass flange. Oh my god, yeah, my pleasure. As if, if, if no, if, even if no one watches me, I'm perfectly fine with talking to myself. So I'm happy that at least there's one person. I'm a happy camper. It's great. <laughs> um, but I was saying last week is honestly, I use a pencil for so much of my stuff before I put any ink down. I use a pencil. You can do, you can imitate most of the of the things that I'm doing, if not all of it, just with a pencil. Just need to sharpen pencil. And that's it. That has like a semi softish lead. Like I wouldn't use like a, um, I wouldn't use like a mechanical pencil because you're you're not gonna get a lot of contrast with thicks and thins. But with this thing here, I'll just I'll actually do all letter group one. I'll do it all in a pencil. So it is definitely one of those things where if you don't know, you don't realize. And uh. How do you find straight pen holders? Uh, I didn't get taught with using, to do pointed pen, I didn't get taught uh, doing it straight. So sorry, this this particular one is a dual one, so I can use it with or without the flange. Um, I, I, I am so used to this. I have no idea if I can do calligraphy with a straight pen holder, but Rachel Yallop does all of her work with a straight one. I've seen her do it and I'm like, I don't know how you do it. It doesn't make sense to my in my brain, like how she's able to manipulate the pen without. She finds that with the flange for her personally is more limiting, that she's more free without it. Whereas I find it the opposite. So, but I was also taught with the, with an oblique. So it I, I really depends. If you can make it work, good for you, girl. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna do everything here. I'm just gonna do it all with, all with a pencil. So we have I. benefit too of a pencil is that if you make a mistake you can really just you can erase it because <laughs> I went over my uh over my my waistline D I'm gonna go through the G Slight narrower bit. Uh, do you mean here? Do you mean uh, 
Like, do you mean the narrower part like this part? So if you're talking about here, this is part of the copper plate proportions. So Oh, no. The slanted lines is just it's just the 55 degrees. I just did it really quickly with the ruler. Everything is at 55, but I I'm just doing this to have make sure that I have like 55 degrees somewhere. But it was just it was just more fast for me to just kind of but I don't think I did it very evenly. I think they're, I don't even know how far they are apart. I didn't even measure. The, um, the thing that I, cause I've, I've definitely had people ask me how wide should my, yeah, I made them myself. I have a, I just, I printed my own. Cause I, I, I do teach. Um, so I just, I have my own, like, stuff, uh, so I just printed off my own, and I just put it, because last week what I had done was I had just slipped it underneath, but I found it was hard to see, so I just traced over it and, and did it. But, um, the reason why I was asking, too, is because usually people will ask me while I'm teaching, is... How wide are my letters? And that's a hard question to answer. Um, with big authority. Because, so, if you're doing Spencerian, there's very, like, everyone talks about, like, however many units wide and height and all that kind of thing. In copper plate, from what I've understood and what I've seen, that doesn't exist. However, I go by however wide your oval is should be the uh, rule of thumb for the rest of your words so and what I mean by that so let's pretend that I've actually measured this and this is actually my three two three and then this is 55 degrees let's just pretend okay because I'm not gonna measure it right now <laughs> and let's say this is the word dog okay let's say that so whatever width this is here this oval should inform what this oval is, should inform how wide this oval is. But not only that, this should also inform how wide your space is between your letters, more or less. So then all of this has equal space in between all the letters. And then your spacing here is all even, your spacing here is all even, and everything is even. This is where your uh, consistency comes into play with copper plate is as long as you're kind of paying attention to what your however wide your oval is that's generally speaking a good rule of thumb to pay attention to um yeah because it works with like bird let's say So we have our oval here, we have our oval here, and then out, oh, there's here, and there's here, and here, these are, actually I shouldn't have taken a B because this one's always a bit weird because there's always like a weird space here because optically this is going to be smaller like when you're doing this, but when you're looking at it, it looks right. Um, but yeah, like you're, this should inform-ish how wide your letters are. Uh, generally speaking too, I kind of attempt to make my ascender loops about as wide as well but yeah that's kind of that's kind of a vibe and i think i think that's it for me today unless you have listen i'm here i can i can stick around for a few more minutes if you have any other questions for me i'm more than willing to answer them for you i'll just have this just have this hanging out 
Oh, with Logos Calligraphy? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a, it's a good rule of thumb. It's a good way to look at things. Um, Sarah Script is also good with that. She's doing right now her classically, her classically copper plate uh, is up, I believe, as of yesterday, today. I saw it go up. And she also does the same uh, same thing. It's a, a lot of people think about it that way. Um, it's a good way to keep things even. Uh, another, another trick that's useful too is, like I said, is with that, with the entry stroke, if we're, we're making sure that that entry stroke is, whoop, I forgot I was zoomed out. Making sure that the entry stroke is always at the same angle too will automatically kind of make your proportions even. Like no matter what letter you're doing, like this, like this entry stroke should always be at the same angle, no matter what letter you're doing. It helps. But do you have any other questions for me? Anything you want to know? Anything that you want to ask? Calligraphy related? Like, I was going to end the stream today at around quarter after five. So I have a few more minutes. I'm glad I ended on time. <laughs> but if not, then I'll, I'll sign off. Oh, good. I'm so happy that you liked it. I have stuff planned until May 1st. So every Thursday until May 1st, I'm going to work my way through all of the stuff. And then after that, we'll see if there's more things. <laughs> and then uh, Mondays, I'm here too. But it's, it's, it's not teaching. It's more just like whatever I feel like. So I'm super happy uh, that I was helpful. I'm, I'm glad you liked it. Um, this is great. Great news. I'm glad it's useful to someone. <laughs> it's not just me talking to the universe. And uh, yeah, I mean, I'll be here next Thursday. I'll be working on letter group two, maybe two and three. We'll see how far we get. So perfect. I'll see you next week. Uh, I hope you have a wonderful weekend and uh, make sure you do your warmups. That's it. Enjoy.